What's up, fanboys and fangirls? Welcome to another edition of the Fan Tracks podcast coming to you from fanboysanonymous.com. I am your host, Tony Mango, and joining me on the panel for this episode is Andre Rosa. Hello, guys. And Sean Walker. Be thankful I retired from your other podcast, because otherwise I won't be doing this today. <laughs> well, today we are going to be tackling Captain America, the first Avenger. It's a 2011 film that is part of phase one of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, if you haven't figured that out already. And if you haven't, why the hell are you listening to this first instead of watching the movie? Go watch the movie and then listen to us, goddammit, because there's obviously spoilers. We're going to be talking throughout the movie, watching that along, and uh, just cracking some jokes and other kind of stuff like that. Obviously, none of us have worked on the movie, so we can't talk about like the production schedule or any of that. But with uh, fan tracks, we approach it from the point of view as a fan Basically the same as if we were all just sitting around bullshitting and like uh, eating some pizza and watching a movie and having fun as friends, that kind of a thing. So uh, what we're going to do for this, for those who have never listened to a fan tracks before, I'm going to give you a countdown of three, two, one, play. And when I say play, then you hit the play button. Just queue up your stream or your DVD or your Blu-ray or whatever the hell you're going to watch this on. And uh, the very first thing that you're going to see is going to be the Paramount logo, and I will give you some updates here and there about some different parts to make sure that you guys are still on track. If you're watching the YouTube video, you will see some kind of a time code that you, uh, you can sync up if you, you know, skip a little bit or whatever the case may be. So uh, bypass all those FBI warnings and the DVD menus and all that, and just get ready to uh, hit the button. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get this started. Three, two, one, play. So right now you should be seeing stars and the uh, other stars coming down, starting to form the Paramount logo, which I think this is the last movie out of the bunch that was a production company outside of just Marvel doing it themselves. Because then they started going into that method of just being the Marvel Cinematic Universe under Marvel, which is so much better because they don't have to answer to anybody else. <laughs> So, wait, so are you saying, like, it was the first one before, like, they got, Disney bought them off, or? I don't know if Disney actually had them at that point yet, but they might have. It might have just been sort of, like, part of the deal with uh, with Paramount, because Paramount had done stuff with other companies, too. Like, um, actually, it might have been Dimension with uh, Incredible Hulk. But they yeah, had Dimension, some, yeah. It was Dimension with Hulk, and it was Paramount for Iron Man, then. It must have yeah. been. So they must have had some kind of a distribution deal with them, and then now we've got the whole thing with Sony and Spider-Man, and for those listening to this, by the way, we're recording this actually April 12th, so we haven't had a chance to see Civil War yet. That's actually why we're doing this, is to prep for Civil War, and there's no way we were going to do fan tracks for every single Marvel movie at a time. That's No, nah, that would have been a... I mean, I might... Because I have most... I don't want to say I have most... I have uh, both Captain America, so I have a couple of the Iron Mans, but like, it... <laughs> It would have been a lot of work to try to do all of that. Yeah, that's um, we don't have that much time yet. We'll eventually get around to it, I'm sure, over the you know course of a couple of years. Maybe when Infinity War comes around, we'll do like a big watch along or something. For by that time, I'll be retired from fanboys. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh, that's, that's I have to watch too many things. <laughs> you know, I I. I don't know, like, I, I remember, because uh, um, before this, actually, because my friend had never seen the uh, um, other Captain America films, because he wanted to watch both of them before he watched Civil War 2, and he told me that, I asked him if he saw the Iron Man movies, he said he only saw the first one, I'm like, okay, that's fine, it's all you need to watch, um, and, like, the... I actually had rewatched both of these movies back to back, like just a couple of days ago. Um, so it, it was, uh, it was kind of weird seeing it. Cause the first time I don't remember seeing the first Captain America in theaters. I remember seeing the second one in theaters though. Second one uh, is so much better. I, I, I agree wholeheartedly. To I mean, be fair, that's the third one. The, the third Captain America. Mm-hmm. Well, if you count the released old... in 1991. Yeah. Oh, that, that was the shit. <laughs> I watched that the other day. It was so weird. It was so cheesy. Red Skull, fucking fantastic character in that. Isn't wow. Red Skull like an Italian fascist in that one instead of a German Nazi? Mm-hmm. And his name's like so something completely different because obviously he's not uh, Johann Schmidt. And for some odd reason, he decides to cut off his own hand instead of stabbing Captain America when he's strapped into a rocket. It was well weird. <laughs> yeah, fuck that movie. <laughs> this and is so much was, better than this. And that was the part where Sean turned it off and was like, yeah. I can't watch this shit. 
<laughs> 35 minutes of my life I wasted watching that crap. So here's our first glimpse right now once he brushes this away of the shield. Once they decide to show it. This was, this was like kind of interesting that they started off this way. I mean, it, it made sense. There's the shield. Uh, that they would start off as like modern day flashback, go back to modern day again, because you're going to alienate some of the audience if you just started off right here with this Norway thing. They'd be like, oh, I'm going to watch some old ass film. And people are going to do the same thing with Wonder Woman because that's going to be 1918. Oh, Oh joy. And, and and that's the thing. Like, I don't know. I've always been a firm believer that you you watch a film and you you try to take away all bias you may have, as hard as it might be, because there are some films that look awful and there's some films that look amazing. So you've got to have to try to go in it with a clear mind. And I think that, you know, I know that most people have their specific styles of film that they like to watch. So if they look at a movie and see, think that's going to be a period piece, they're not going to be as attracted to it, but you know, you just, you just got to give it a chance. If you know, it's going to be a superhero film, then, you know, try to see if you can uh, look past the period or the, um, the, uh, I don't want to say snobbishness, but like look past like what it might essentially look like from the trailers. I mean, DC fans are just going to watch it anyways and stuff. And people who like comic book movies are going to watch it anyways. So, yeah, I mean, you know. I was like, I wasn't the biggest fan of Captain America, but after watching Iron Man and all that, I was just kind of like, yeah, I'm, I know I'm going opening night. Like, fuck it, you know. And I ended up, this is actually one of my least favorite of the Marvel cinematic universe films that have come out so far because it's just there's some problems here and there i mean i'll I'll nitpick stuff throughout the whole movie but um you know i left this going i'm i'll be seeing the next one opening night anyway i'll be seeing i'll be seeing wonder woman opening night i'll be seeing everything opening night because fuck it's marvel it's dc it's yeah you know by default i'm gonna be loving it yeah uh and i i do agree with you like i actually do like like this movie for the most part i think it's just like when I was watching it the the when I was watching it a couple of days ago, I just kind of felt like I don't know, it wasn't as it wasn't as good and I think the problem is is that I'm comparing it too much to the other films, but like I feel like this one it, it's kind of the most basic like you can with your like um uh uh origin story, that's what it's called. Yeah. It, it's kind of like the basic origin story and there's there's a lot of other superhero films that are uh so much better when it comes to their uh stories now granted i think chris evans does a great job in this movie i don't think like the problem is the way he portrays the character i just kind of think captain america as a character at least in this film isn't really that interesting you know i mean they did a much better job of portraying him in like the winter soldier and it looks like civil war is going that same route type thing but you know in this one like it's not that i didn't care about captain america it's just that his personality just wasn't that uh you know original i should say which kind of sucks you know because uh, you were talking about the uh the original captain america movie that came out in like the early 90s um because my dad's favorite hero is captain america it's always been captain america for him so you know he told me that that film just kind of ruined his life for a while <laughs> um so when th- when these films came out he was obviously really excited for them and you know i think that this film while it's you know, it's it's still a cool watch it's just that i just feel like it's it's essence and character it wasn't as uh as good as it could have been or as good as making me interested in the character to just start off with you know i got a little problem with this like the most obvious button in the fucking world <laughs> like i wonder where it is oh wait there it is it's because <laughs> yeah. he's mr smith tony all right <laughs> you know what i never noticed though before and I just noticed it now. They actually have like right around his ear. You can tell that there's like a little bit of like a skin flap to kind of show that he would be tearing off his uh, face, which is kind of that's a good little detail. Yeah, and I, I do like there. When I was rewatching this, there are some things I appreciated about it. Like there are some kind of, I, while obvious kind of forms of symbolism, there are things that they put in that you wouldn't necessarily notice on the first watch, which. You know, I'm 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 kind of a believer that a movie that a good a great movie you could watch over and over again and it never gets bad. You know, yeah. um, so w- when they put things in this that you would notice on a second watch rather than your first, it kind of makes me feel like ah, they actually put more effort than they could have. You know, which you know that's some good things about this film. You know, oh, 
here we got our Hydra logo. We got... Now, Sean, I'm curious about one thing here. Since you are in the UK, is there any kind of like lost in translation stuff when it comes to watching something like Captain America? No. It's never no. like, well, I don't feel that American pride or like any of that kind of stuff. I mean, I know you want to come over to America to eat our food, but not, not the same as fighting in a war. <laughs> I think it's just the same in general with Britain and America, you know, when it comes to, like, war and shit. You just want to do right by your family, like, you know? Hmm. Not me, man. I'm He's sitting here trying to figure out any way that he can get away into the army. I'm like, fuck that. I would try to figure out every way to get out of it. Yeah. <laughs> What, what you need, Tony, right, is two dodgy knees like yours truly, and then tell them I'll ask you to hold a gun. I'll just send them a picture of uh, the emaciated Chris Evans in this scene, and I'll be like, that that's me. That's uh... oh. Which, kudos to them. Great job on the special effects for this. Like, you don't really think twice that it's just his face and then some other dude's body. Yeah, it, it's it's kind of like a situation where, like, you you know it but it's it's done very seamlessly so and I, when i was first watching this because i had a hard time explaining to my friend how they were able to do this because like i imagine them like if they use cgi on kind of like the neck area to kind of make it uh the same same skin tone as the body and the face and stuff but uh because at first he was like wait a minute was he that skinny and that short and then all of a sudden just got really buff? <laughs> and I was like, uh, if he did that, he would I, – I would – I don't know what he did. Like he would have had to take some height steroids or something like that because what is it? He's like 5'4 when he starts off the movie, but he ends up like 6'2 after the thing, right? Yeah. I mean that – it's uh, a body double and then they shot like – um if I remember correctly, they shot like Chris Evans was wearing just one of those like green screen suits all the way up to his neck. And then they just ah. put his head on top of the other dude, which is just kind of like, that must have been <laughs> awkward as hell to film. But It must have. But I mean, hey, you know, that's why I like, yeah, that's why I like, I give credit where like, like I know like acting, it, it it's very, it seems it's very uh, stressful at times. And it also can seem very weird in certain situations you know because you basically have to act in a giant suit and you have to act like it's not there like i don't know i mean i've been in like some plays in high school or whatever but i don't know if i'm that good of an actor to look at a guy in a green suit and not like smile or something you know <laughs> and th there was a there was a point during the uh the conversation not the conversation but during the fight where he was getting his ass kicked where he held up like the trash bin and like it, 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 he he just kind of tossed it aside i like that's kind of like one of the symbolisms that i kind of caught like throughout the film a couple of times he carries like these circular objects that's supposed to be the shield and like the first few times it gets kind of slung away but once he gets his real shield that's when he kind of uh becomes like the muscular steroid driven you know soldier that he that happens so you know that's just something that i noticed the first time or the, the second time i watched actually yeah they play around with a couple little things here like um well, Sean, are you familiar with the uh, the comics all that much? No, I'm the only subject. Well, the only thing that I had exposure—that's the word—to Captain America I had was the '60s cartoon, hmm. which was badass. And Jenna Coleman is sexy as oh, fuck. She's so hot. The one in the uh, the brunette, which they just showed a second ago. Uh, for those who want to go back and rewind it or whatever, uh. It said uh, Phineas Horton and the synthetic man or whatever. That actually is the Human Torch. Not the Fantastic Four Human Torch, the original Human Torch. So they got androids even in uh, the war, even though for some reason in a minute, Howard Stark can't get a fucking car to float. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. It, maybe it's just different types of technology. I mean, I... I guess like it, it would it would make sense like if we have androids why wouldn't we have like floating cars and stuff but uh I mean I wasn't never really that great in science in school to begin with but I'm pretty sure that it, it might take it might end up taking less work to create AI than it would to make a car float <laughs> I don't know like I I could I could believe it you know I mean it, it wouldn't seem like it'd be in order but I could believe that something of a higher technology than other could be built if they didn't have the right you know stuff for it you know. <laughs> right, is uh, it the same car? The same actor who plays Bucky in the Winter Soldier? Yeah, yeah, Sebastian yeah, that, Stan. That, that, yeah, doesn't look like him. You don't yeah, think they so? look. No, I, I think it's because because like. 
in uh in the winter soldier he has very long black hair yeah. and like in this one he has kind of like not a i wouldn't say a baby face but he has a he has like that really short black hair as if he's going to enlist in the army type thing you know um and they do look very different and i think that actually helps both films because in the second one you don't really like see i mean you know it's a uh, bucky once the mask is taken off but throughout the thing you know you're kind of wondering because i didn't know it was bucky at first and then once it was revealed i was like oh okay you know it, it kind of it's kind of like showing you because he's kind of a different character instead of playing bucky he's the winter soldier they kind of had to adjust his looks in order to you know make him feel like he was different so yeah this is like such a good speech to show off like his character just like man like i should lay my down my life just the same as everybody else and of course you got stanley tucci just kind of like huh he's not a dick <laughs> he's like every other person in the army is obviously a dick except for this guy i might as well take him in you know it is and weird th though thinking about bucky that uh bucky in the comics and all the other like incarnations he's always like a teenage robin kind of to captain america and this one he's like practically twice the size he's watching out for him it's like the role reversal sort of but it makes sense because i mean if they would have introduced bucky as this like 14 year old that tags along with him everybody would have been like this is cheesy as fuck man like, yeah plus do you okay do you, go ahead, bucky, do you reckon bucky had a threesome that night oh <laughs> of course why Definitely, wouldn't he right <laughs> <laughs> if he's got Jenna Coleman and the other good looking chick, but who isn't as good looking as Jenna Coleman, why wouldn't he? <laughs> Sebastian Stan's a good looking guy. He's Bucky. He's like, I'm Bucky and I'm here to fuck. <laughs> no, that's uh, in context. That's so awful. <laughs> but, Although um, back in the day with uh, the 40s, it probably wouldn't have had the right protection and stuff. There's probably little Bucky's going around. Maybe probably. that's going to be what Civil War's about. <laughs> So we're like, like the trailers, like I was, I was joking with my brother, how, like, you know, how in the, the Spider-Man, Amazing Spider-Man 2 trailer, how they had the Rhino and Spider-Man thing. And then like, like May 6 or something like that. But like, when you watch the movie, the fight never happens. That's where they end the film. Yeah. That was so like, stupid. Like what if in civil war, like that fight in the trailer, as soon as they're about to go, they just end the film right there. <laughs> the whole like, movie is just them looking at the Sokovia Accords. <laughs> I'd still like it, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm still like, I, I mean, I'd be a little bit pissed off that it had a very anticlimactic ending. Uh, but, you know, for, for what it's worth, I, I, I think it'll be a pretty good movie. But anyways, uh, I was, uh, it's, uh, oh shit, I forgot what I was going to say. I, I lost, <laughs> I lost track, but whatever. It was, it was something about uh, Bucky's three. Oh, no, it wasn't about Bucky's threesome, whatever. Let's move on. <laughs> And okay, all that the, list of all the stuff you can't have on the form, like you can't have asthma, whatever. Which he's got like everything. He's he's basically Mr. Burns in uh, that Simpsons episode where they're like, you've got all these diseases and they're all working against each other, so that's why you are immortal. <laughs> <laughs> and like that's something I don't like about this scene in particular is that they've already addressed that he can't go into the army based on everything that he has and stuff but it's like then in a couple of scenes later they blatantly show you a sign that says it's illegal to falsify your forms but it's like we already knew that ahead of time you didn't need either don't bring it up earlier in the film through the dialogue or don't bring it up through the visuals like you don't have to have two separate ways of um uh development for the same topic, you know, like, I don't know. That's just something I thought, I thought it was fine. I, like some people might not have caught it the first time or, you know, I mean, there's people that like, they go to the bathroom in the theater or I, don't, I never understood that. Either. I've never, ever once gone to the bathroom in the middle of a movie unless it's the, like at home and I could pause it or whatever. But the only, the only time I've ever done it is if I went to a movie that I already saw before. Yeah. So well, that yeah, I wouldn't, because I can't remember because I probably there we go. Done iconic it. shot right there. Arnim Zola. It's, uh, it's for those uh, who follow the comic and they know that he's actually normally has his face in the middle of a television in the middle of his stomach it's like the best way to get around that as possible this fucking as, tool what Zola what? yeah Zola's great though he's like he's such a good uh, I don't know like you can boss him around he's a little, some stupid little egghead I he don't... survives in the next film spoiler alert 
Yeah, well, again, I mean, if you're not watching this movie, yeah, man, which for the is fucking time. stupid as fuck. <laughs> Robocop three much. Was it Robocop <laughs> three? It is, right? The one where he like turns into like a, a kind of a different type of Robocop. Like he's like good type not good but like he instead of like killing people he's all like fucking hi citizens or something like that and he's kind of more uh on the pg side or are you talking about something different uh, i'm talking about the villain with the computer face oh uh, I, I think that's robocop 2 oh uh, yeah that fucking yeah. film with the the drugs and yeah. stuff yeah i think this robocop 2 because 3 is about the uh I'm sitting here talking about robocop in the middle of a cat <laughs> uh 3 is like where you uh he's fighting like the chinese uh group or the the triads or something you know what though speaking of um switching over to different movies and whatever they're showing off the tesseract here that's one of their biggest things that they're they're pulling out this ended up being such a huge deal with the marvel cinematic universe and they they merged the cosmic cube with the tesseract and they kind of made that one of the uh one of the infinity stones which i'm cool with uh you know it's against the comics but it's fine but man if you would have told me back when Iron Man came out that they were going to end up having, first off, in Iron Man 2, they show the Tesseract. And at that point in the movie, I'm watching that. I was just kind of like, oh, my God, they're going to do a fucking Cosmic Cube. This is insane. And then we have Captain America out of all movies is going to have the damn Infinity Stones are going to pop up. I was just like, this is so crazy. I would, never would have imagined it. Yeah, I mean, this 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 entire situation kind of uh, is it, this is the very reason that it's kind of forced DC's hand to try to create their own universe is because Marvel did it so seamlessly, it seems that like, you know, a lot of the times yeah, DC were like, oh, crap, we need to we need to try to make our own universe and stuff like that. And I really liked it because I remember the first time I because I never knew what the Avengers was when I first watched Iron Man. Cause my dad was always talking about comics and stuff. And at the end credit scene where it showed like, uh, uh, Samuel Jackson is Nick Fury. And I was like, Oh, who's that? And then my dad was like, Oh my gosh, they're probably going to make an Avengers movie. So, you know, all of these kind of, all of these things kind of mixed together. Uh, and it makes sense that each character in the Marvel universe that combines for the Avengers kind of has a link to one of the infinity stones, you know? Or at least the Infinity Stones is mentioned or seen in like each of the films, kind of you know to kind of hint at the eventual like Infinity Gauntlet uh, films. Yeah, it's a good way to set it up and not rush like DC's doing. Yeah, I went and which look like once DC, I feel like gets settled in, I think they'll be able to focus more on the solo films, and that's when it's going to really shine. But I feel like right now they're rushing it so much that it's kind of feeling forced. Like as I I did like Batman for Superman, but that one scene with the Wonder Woman looking at the file with all the DC like Justice League characters was it was so forced, and it's like I that scene did not need to be there at all. If anything, they could have made it an end credit scene, and it would have been better. You know. So am I, I the only person that thinks here that at least in this movie that I don't buy the Peggy and um. Steve romance. Not well, this not at this time. When he gets buff, yeah. I, I don't even buy it then. Like they kind of rush a little bit. And the, one of my issues with this movie is that they don't set up the Red Skull as much and they don't set up Peggy as much for me to actually buy into them being as important as they should be. Like I mean <laughs> eventually we got to a point where we've got Peggy popping up in Agent Carter and we've got her in even Ant Man. And by now, like, Peggy's such an important character, but, like, I don't know, There's it's something a little bit lacking in this movie. They do good with, like, this scene here to show that, you know, he's smart and he's kind of, uh... They stole this from The Simpsons, by the way. The, uh, the whole taking down the, uh, flag through that mm-hmm. thing? Well, it's, uh, you know, the role Simpsons did it. <laughs> Simpsons, it. Simpsons did it first, you know? And here's the thing I will say about the, the Peggy and, um, uh, Captain America romance. Like, I, I think that at the first, like, they they kind of hinted it because you mentioned earlier that when Stanley Tucci was looking at uh, uh, Steve Rogers, he was basically like, oh, look, he's a nice guy and stuff. I feel like uh, Agent Carter's been around just, like, asshole soldiers the entire time. So when finally, like, Rogers comes along, she's like, oh, well, I'm kind of drawn to him because he's kind of a weak little shit. Uh, 
But uh, eventually, once he gets buff, it kind of counteracts that point of her being attracted to him in the first place. Because now, oh, it's okay that you have a good personality along with your good boyish good looks, as opposed to just a good personality that you did then. You know, I feel like at first they had something going with it, but then once he became buff, it just kind of seemed like, oh, okay, now she's gonna like him even more just because you know. So it's a wish fulfillment of he's a nice guy, but if he was only better looking, it would be a different story. And then, oh man, now he's got muscles. Well, you know, if he was rich, <laughs> story of my life, man, story of my life. That's why I started hitting the gym. You know, the gym, the gym doesn't matter, man. Look at Hodge. You got to hit that steroids. <laughs> yeah. You need to get those Vita rays. Which, this, and this scene right here, retarded. this is what? This you would so not good. jump on a grenade. You know what? Like I actually, but I mean, a normal person wouldn't, but Steve Rogers would. Yeah, and I that's think, what I love about this is like, it, it shows right there that you don't even need any more scenes to show it off that he's like, dude, I will fall down on the grenade literally. And that's why, I mean, like I said before, we we're watching this movie a couple or a couple of weeks. Yeah. Before civil war comes out, he's totally going to die. Like he, he has to die in these uh, films and he has to come back in an infinity war and save the day and whatever. But like, um, Rogers is that dude, man. He's gonna, he's gonna fall on the grenade if he needs to. And Hodge is a, an ass. <laughs> so. I, I, I don't know if he'll die in a civil war. I'm pretty sure that like a shitload of people are dying in infinity got or infinity gauntlet part one or something, because uh, that, People just have to die because I imagine uh, uh, Thanos just ruling over everything at the end of the film and then the second film kind of being the whole we got to redeem ourselves. We have to avenge the solar system, essentially, you know, Um, I don't know if he's going to die. And that's the thing, though, because what I didn't like uh, spoilers, who who gives a shit? Uh, What I didn't like about the uh, second film is that they kill off Nick Fury only to bring him back in the same film. And I sit there going. By doing that, you're kind of making it seem like the deaths in the films have no stakes, you know, like, and I understand they killed Quicksilver in, you know, Age of Ultron, but come on, he wasn't that big of a character, you know, like killing off Nick Fury is a much bigger deal. And to bring him back, it just kind of makes me feel like if Captain America were to die at some point. I would feel pretty like, oh, crap, they killed him off. But at the same time, I would think about the Nick Fury situation and think, well, they'll find a way to bring him back. back. Yeah, Yeah, and and, and, and it kind of takes away the stakes of it. Now, if they were to just kill the character off and that was the last we ever saw the character, then I would feel like, okay, they actually did something. And if you wanted to bring that character back, you could um, make a spinoff film or like a, a solo film or like kind of reboot the universe for that character and make cast a new person. Although I wouldn't want them to cast a new Captain America just yet, you know, cause Chris Evans is pretty perfect for the role, you know? Um, but still like, I, I just feel like if a death were to happen in one of these films, it really wouldn't matter in the end because they could just bring them back. And that's why I didn't really like the ending of Batman for Superman because they kill spoilers for that one. If you haven't seen it, uh, Superman dies. But then like the last two seconds you see is like coffin kind of shake. And I'm like, really? You go through that whole 20 minutes after the fight scene to go through the funeral to have everyone who loves him weeping and he's just going to be alive. How the fuck is he going to explain that to Lois Lane and his mom? Oh, hey, by the way, I'm alive. Like, like I would be pretty pissed off, you know? So I I, I don't know. I, I'm curious to see how they're going to handle any deaths in the cinematic universe. And I'm hoping that it's going to be in a different way than it has been. But if they just kill a character to just bring them back, it just it just makes me feel like there's no stakes in the film, you know? I, I do. I, you ever have this to drink, Sean? <laughs> what is it? All I know is it's from Osblug. But trust me, if it was on the table right now, I'd be doing a shot. Fuck it. Why not? Put it on your chest, man. <laughs> a good little speech from Stanley Tucci. Mm-hmm. Oh, did you see that then? Spider Man just went past that window. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you sure it was Spider Man and not Yoda? <laughs> And, and I like this little joke here that he does when, like, he just takes the drink and pours the second one <laughs> in his drink. Yeah, just like, I don't have fucking surgery. <laughs> yeah, like, so, so sorry, but it sucks to be you, man, but uh, I, I got a second drink. And that's that would have been the last time, too, that Steve would have been able to get drunk. Because they show oh. later on in the movie that he can't get drunk anymore. 
So yeah, I didn't even notice he that. Got, the first he time. got denied his last uh, potential time to get drunk. Poor guy. Well, then again, I'm somebody who doesn't drink at all. So what am I saying? I've I've, I've never drank, so I don't know. I I might I might try one day, but like it's not on the to, my to do list right now. What is it with you and not drinking? God damn you, Yanks! <laughs> so weird. <laughs> it's extremely rare to find somebody who doesn't drink. I'm 28 and I still have never gotten drunk a single time. Which oh, days? Which days? <laughs> days are probably drunk right now too. I don't know. Well, I mean, right? I, I, I'm, I'm only 19, so that's why I haven't drank yet. Because it's oh uh, yeah, you're technically illegal to drink. It's illegal, but no, it's a, it's, it's just I, I don't know. I even, even when I've been around alcohol, I've never felt the need to do it. I guess it's just never been something that I've been interested in. But you know, one day it'll happen. I'm sure. I, of it. I tell you, who drinks a lot probably Ar- Arnim Zola. It's just kind of like this life sucks. He, I, even he, he just kind of looks like, oh man, I need a drink right now. This guy is insane. Hey, um, I don't know if you, is he the same guy? I don't know because I've never seen the Human Centipede two, but no, oh, I, I definitely haven't. <laughs> he looks like the, uh, I from the trailers, he kind of looks like the evil scientist who puts the thing together. Like I, I don't know, he looks familiar. I don't know what movies he's been in. I never bothered to IMDb him or something like that, but I probably should. Do you reckon he asks someone to help him with his grocery shopping because he can't reach the top shelf? <laughs> probably. <laughs> I've uh, been at the uh, grocery store and had to like reach a, a bottle or something for somebody before. I'm pretty sure Toby Jones isn't the same kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, it's it must uh, especially like Steve Rogers. Well, Steve, crap. I mean, shit, he's. <laughs> I don't I See, I don't buy the relationship now when they're sat in the car together. Right. Cause you're like, there's no way on this planet that guy there, that dweeby looking little guy, could pull that. She's like a ten. He's like a three. Eh, you know, I wouldn't go that I, far I, and give her a I'd ten. I'd go I'd go five to I'd go five to six on Chris Evans simply because he has a pretty good looking face, but his body's just really scrawny and like ugly as shit. So <laughs> fucking haircut, man. Okay, yeah, you can do something a little better with this hair. Hey, wait, I have a question. When he went through the uh, the the machine, did his hair change too? Oh, yeah, like, you know, his hair should have probably grown. That would have made made sense. I, well, I, I, I'm pretty sure that his hair changed styles too. I, it's not that just that he grew, but it like completely formed itself into like a very <laughs> handsome a nice, haircut. A nice quaff. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know. Maybe when we see it soon, we'll see if that's true. But like, I'm pretty sure it is. As far as her, I'd probably give her a nine. I don't know. She looks much better in the red dress when we see her later on, but I guess in uniform, she's looked more, much more formal, I should say. So I'm not into the 50s kind of style and the 40s style and any of that kind of stuff. I mean, it'd be a hell of a lot better oh. looking this. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> oh, God, that is but, a uh, perfect tan right there. <laughs> if I were back in the day, I'd probably think that Peggy was like a 10. But, you know, looking back now, comparing her to somebody like the modern day sort of like... I mean, give me, like, an Anna Kendrick and me, uh, you know. But, I mean, of course, I'm not going to turn she's Hilly no Atwell down, well. like, you know. Honestly, I'd prefer Peggy over Anna Kendrick. I, I think, Good, I more think, Anna Kendrick for me. <laughs> well, because, cause like, I think it's because Peggy's a little bit, like, because I'm, sa- I'm not really a chubby chaser, but, like, Anna Kendrick's <laughs> a bit, she's a bit too skinny, like. Like, like Peggy's like the perfect shape for me. Like, I'm like, yeah, you're good. You know, like there's nothing wrong with having cushion for the pushing. Well, thankfully, she's not a big girl. Because then I would have been. Thankfully. Oh, if they would have ended up casting somebody who's like fat for the role, then it would have been like, what the hell? Like, she's she's fit. In that case, in that case, it might have been more believable, the relationship. Yeah. If like she was bigger and like she was like, oh man, you know, but then as soon as he would turn to this buff, good looking guy, it wouldn't have been believable. But you know what? I buy into her being able to have like military cred. That's the thing. Like, yeah, like, I think does... it's, overall it's good casting because they were originally going to go with a couple other people. And as much as I like Allison Brie and a couple other people like that, I'm like, you know what? No, it, it, Peggy Carter, she they did a good casting job here. And you know what? Actually, speaking of good casting jobs. Guy in the back with the glasses right now, for anybody who uh, didn't know this ahead of time, that's Richard Armitage. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but he is the dude that was in uh, the Hobbit films as uh, the main Hobbit. I can't remember his name. Uh, Something dumb, I'm sure, because I hate those fucking movies. But oh, he, Thorin? 
Uh, yeah, Thorin. Yeah, that's it. That's Thorin. Oh, really? Huh. Mm-hmm. I I never noticed that the first time. It's it it's weird. Um, you know what? What is weird? He comes what? out all oiled. <gasps> oh yeah, it's it's as if like the machine had its own tanning salon in it after the uh, transformation had happened. So it's like, like, oh yes, yeah, level all that baby oil. Like it's like why. <laughs> Why do you have to come out all oily like what the fuck? Well, see, there's a deleted scene where um right after they inject him with the Vita Rays, they always they throw like a couple sticks of butter in the machine too. And... <laughs> they gotta give him a nice glaze. Yeah, you know. It's like basting a turkey or something. Mm-hmm. Uh speaking of uh casting, like, do you know who plays uh uh Howard Stark? Because he looks familiar as far as uh actor. That is Dominic Cooper. Dominic Cooper, has he been in things? I mean, I, I don't know, like, what, do you know anything he's been in? I can always Let's Google him on my phone. He's been in a couple things here and there, but I've never really checked him out in all that much. I know he's, um, he's in some movie that's out, or some TV show that's out now that's supposed to be good, uh, Preacher. And, uh, looks like he was in, oh, a bunch of garbage, Abraham Lincoln, Vampire Hunter, that was a good film. Hey, hey, hey as, as, don't talk shit about that movie. It's like, <laughs> everyone's like, oh man, the movie's dumb, but it's like, it's Abraham Lincoln fucking slinging axes and fighting vampires. Like, I, I, what do you, ex- what do you expect it to be? Like, I don't know. I think like, it's just like a dumb, fun movie. Like, I mean, I can understand why people just don't like it and stuff, but honestly, it's it's just it's just a nice movie to watch. I don't know. I'm I'm a sucker for just dumb movies that have like really dumb premises. I maybe it's because when I was a child I used to watch the sci-fi channel every day. So like dumb premises really don't bother me as much. Oh, they've well, injected him with blue kryptonite. <laughs> it's actually just blue powerade or Windex. You know what, they could have gone a couple of different ways. Like, in the comics, they've had it a couple of different times where it's almost just, like, him on a table, and sometimes it's him in, like, this huge chamber and whatever. I actually like this kind of just, like, a little pod. It makes sense to me. It works. It's, like, he's got his little, uh, his injections, and he's got the, the Vita rays, which they never explain exactly what that is, but that's sort of because it's, like, well we explain a little bit too much it's going to be kind of ridiculous but Mm -hmm. and i like howard stark being a part of this that's something that's not usually in the comics and it's a great way to tie back to iron man i was also looking at uh um the actor um and he's gonna be in the warcraft film coming out uh um that's gonna either tank or it's gonna be making a shit ton of money it, 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 honestly, like you ever seen, you ever seen the trailers for like Jack the Jack the Giant Slayer? Never saw the movie, but I saw the trailers. It looks like it all looks almost exactly like that as far as its style. And I'm just like, I I don't know. I mean, I've never been a World of Warcraft player at all, so it doesn't really matter to me. But still, I, I, I don't I don't really I just because if it's great, I'll be glad because video game films typically are just awful, you know. Um, the one I am looking forward to the Ratchet and Clank film just simply because I played Ratchet and Clank all the time. So I'm hoping that because it's an animated film, it might actually be good. But still, it um, yeah, I just thought that was a pretty interesting. And Steve is dead. <gasps> nah, oh, no, he comes out. He comes out and goes flame on. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, say what you will about the first like two Fantastic Four films. Or uh, oh. Hang on. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, speak of the first Fantastic Four films, Chris Evans is by far the best part of those films. You know, like, I, I, that's the reason he got this Captain America role, because they were like, we see potential in this guy, you know? And I didn't know that, but Tim Story did that, and it's like the first, the director who directed Ride Along and Ride Along 2 <laughs> did the Fantastic Four films, which I'm like, okay, no wonder they weren't that good. <laughs> Uh, Suddenly, see, Peggy is so it. vain now. Look, she's like, damn. Yeah, she's like breathing that. heavily and everything. It's like, yeah, I gotta touch his oily peck. Oh, she, she, yeah, they, she literally did that. She had no reason to touch him, but she just did. She was like, I, I just need to touch. It's like, uh, it's like that SpongeBob episode where Patrick, all he had, to, he was just trying to touch that, like everything, or like a jellyfish museum or some <laughs> shit like that. I don't know. I was watching SpongeBob recently. That's why it came to mind. 
Oh, here no. we go with fucking uh, Lord of the Rings, dude, knocking out. And he's oh. dead. Oh, no. Stanley Tucci. Oh, man. Oh, come on. Okay, like, by the way, like, I figured Peggy would be a little bit of a better shot. <laughs> but whatever. Remember, I added these muscles. <laughs> you owe me, your new, everything that happens from this point on. You you owe me like to yeah. your life, basically. There's probably so many deleted scenes of like, um, oh, yeah, real good help you are, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> like you got to imagine when they're filming that scene, he's got to do something like you know, go fuck Peggy or something. <laughs> like one of like the blooper reels. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that would, that wouldn't be like, I would be, it would just be hilarious if it was like a family that was going to watch like the commentary and like Stanley Tucci is like, you better fuck Peggy. <laughs> and then it's like, mom, what did he say? And she's like, um, I, I don't know. <laughs> like, I don't know how, it, I always thought about how I'd explain like sex to a child. That happened one time. My cousin asked me what a porn star was and I'm sitting there like, wait wait how do you know what that is and she was like i heard it in a song and i'm like oh well go ask go ask your mom because i i don't want to explain that to you so those curious about this scene here you can't really tell but i know when they were filming this um he's wearing boots that look like feet like it's you know obviously he's not running with a, just his bare feet but uh when they were filming it he basically looked like a hobbit like it was really awkward and when we had no context seeing this ahead of time or anything and everybody was just kind of like what the fuck are they filming like did that screw up his feet like is this gonna be one of those things where that's like a side plot of this or whatever but it works i mean you can't really tell that he's wearing fake feet no not at all actually it seems it seems very especially if like they had shown that one shot where he touched the car like even if you had paused it right there, it probably would have been oh okay. And you can see all the I like how you can see all the dirt at the bottom of his feet because that, that that adds a lot of continuity to it. Oh wait wait nope never mind dirt's gone. <laughs> <laughs> well fuck continuity I guess. I I I hate it when like I I I something happens in a movie and I'm like oh that was pretty cool and then two seconds later it just counters that with something that's I'm like okay. Like, I don't know. I'm a little, I'm a little bit upset now, <laughs> but I did. I, I also like that flip of the car though, how it, it shows the actor actually flipping like the car flipping down. And I know the actor wasn't in the flipping car, but like it actually showed the last little bit of it where he kind of fell with the car and came out. It kind of, you know, it kind of looks cool, you know? And it's like, I, and then I don't know. I don't like how he had to take the kid hostage. That just kind of seemed he did, that was unnecessary. Nah, you got to do that. You're a bad guy. That's what yeah. I would do. I'm uh, sure that's what Sean, Sean would probably do that on a regular day, right? <laughs> dude, I would have taken my cyanide pill right about now. You know. Well, no, but I mean, like the cyanide pill is a last resort. You want to try to get away from the enemy before you actually do that. I mean, he was this close; like he was in like a ship going underwater. You know, uh, speaking well, of ship going underwater, a ginger guy can swim. <laughs> <laughs> now, this Rather is uh, here's one of my issues with this movie. He just conveniently has this thing here, which means that he knew that he had to go to this area specifically and whatever. Now, I'll buy it a little bit, but at the same time, it's kind of. Um, uh, it's a little movie magic, I guess. It is like, a, it's a, it's a cool, it's a very odd coincidence that you just happen to be running away. Well, I mean, then again, though, he was driving to this area like when he was trying to get away from Captain America. Like he was going that direction anyway, so it's yeah, believable. It's, like, it's it believable enough that he knew he that I was going to be there. Still His a little like controls got a homing beacon. That's what it is. Yeah, actually, you know what? The bigger problem is he uses the same lighter to blow up two different things. How the hell do you do that? And oh, there no, goes the formula. This guy's clothes are so fucking dry. <laughs> yeah, why are you going to go with that even more? Uh, ah, there goes Thorin. No! Thorin! <laughs> Hail Hydra! Uh, There's yeah. our first Hail Hydra, right? Or did they... No, uh, no, it, it is the it first... I, think, I believe it's the first Hail Hydra. Wait, wait. Oh, uh, we're going to start a drinking game. Every time they'd say Hail Hydra. Did you play the game, Sean? No. 
I watched a playthrough of it because I don't have any newer systems or whatever, and it's like they kind of filled in some blanks here and there, but a little weird. Which game are you referring to? Uh, what was the name of it? I think it was Captain America Super Soldier. Oh, I I, I usually don't play uh like movie, movie based video games. There's it's rare that they're ever that good. Similar to like movie based games or movie yeah movie based on video. There's a Tie Fighter pilot. Where? Which one? <laughs> the Hydra guards look so similar to those. Oh, okay, yeah. The <laughs> Red Skull, our good old Italian fascist friend. <laughs> I always thought about this, like the the Red Skull, like he he works pretty close with Hitler, right? So has he just been doing this? Like Hitler's telling him to do this, is he not, or is he doing this on his own? He's sort of doing it on his own. It's um, they they play into the occult stuff that Hitler was into quite a bit because, you know, for like actual like I, non. I the plot was stuff. that you had to like you wanted to overthrow Hitler, right? Yeah, sort of like um, in in real history, Hitler was really into the occult, and there's a lot of rumors that he was trying to look into like alien stuff, and that he was trying to look into that. So they kind of play into that a little bit. Hell, Hellboy does the same thing. Oh, here we go, superstar score Hitler. Yeah. <laughs> coming. <laughs> <laughs> but um, they kind of make it in this one a little because they couldn't really do too much about Hitler in this movie without pissing off like the Disney folk and whatnot. Well, of course. Um, well, but, so but... they made it a little bit different where they, it's he's instead of just being flat out Nazis, it's a subdivision and he's trying to take over Hitler. Like uh, if it's one of these scenes, I don't know. It might even be this one now that I, I don't really have the volume up that lot, uh, loud, but where he says, like, Hitler's plan is just, like, that's eh, bullshit. It's, are you going to take over a couple countries? Fuck you. It's actually the world we need to take over and other it's, worlds. And It's it's actually coming up, so like, is... closely. The, re- the reason, be- I have I have it on subtitles, so that way I can just read along as I'm listening to you guys and talk. So, you know, it just makes it easier. Oh, oh no. So. <laughs> I, I don't know why, like, I find, like... That part's so funny, where he's just like yelling, like "shmer," <laughs> and then he just dies. Yeah, here we go. There's the whole explanation of like Mister yeah, Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> he's so he looks so awkward. every time. I do it every <laughs> what time a time fucking dork! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, Hell Hydra, buddy. Gotta add the Mister Anderson on everything he says, right from this point on. Because that's all he's going to be known for, is Mr. Smith. I do it in the uh, Lord of the Rings films. There's the stereotypical hot nurse from back in the day. Oh uh, yeah. I like to look up her skirt, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, it's like, uh, it's uh, it's weird. Like, I don't know, like, it, it, I love it in movies how they make every nurse kind of attractive. But like, in, <laughs> in reality, like... I mean, it's it's just weird how, like, that one thing was supposed to be, like, sexy at one point. I mean, now it's sexy if you make it sexy. I mean, anything's sexy, I guess, if you make it sexy. But I don't know. I've never seen any uh, sexy garbage women. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, there's know. hot janitors that are out there. If you if you Google slutty minions, I'm pretty sure there's going to be something yeah, that comes true. up. You know, I mean, I mean, you can't. I guess beauty is in the eyes of the beholder, I guess. So whatever you find attractive, you find attractive. So it, I guess it really just depends on your preference. I mean, it's just weird that nurse was a profession that got popularized by being sexy. And from Animaniacs. Hello, nurse. <laughs> you know what? Tommy Lee Jones is really good in this movie. He's Yeah, I, he's I, a good com- uh, comedic relief. Yeah, and I like... I like him in a lot of stuff. Like, I don't think there's a bad movie. Well, there's probably bad movies he's been in, but like, I don't think he's ever been bad in a movie. You know, Men in Black Two. Man, I don't it's think been so long since I've seen Men in Black Two. I I couldn't give you because I when I was very young when I watched both of them. I mean, I've seen the first one recently. The first one holds up a lot. It's really great. Um, the second one, I remember being a little kid and being like oh man you know aliens and guns and whatnot but i don't really remember that much about it i don't remember him being bad in it though i mean i could say he's bad in the third one but he's hardly in it so (laughs) you know still oh now he's changed his hairstyle no 
Oh yeah, he did. I I oh, also this is the fucking song, right? The song's great. Love this part of the film. Love it. Well, I I I don't know. Like that's another thing that upset me a little bit was like the fact See, that at least this mask has the fucking wings on it. Yeah, yeah but you know what? They couldn't go with a, a suit just like this and make it real. Like that's why I like this. They keep the old shield they keep the old look but it's a way to kind of um to write it off like 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 think about it this way would you want to have a batman film where he's wearing the blue with the tacky yellow belt and the gray suit kind of basically from like adam west batman honestly i think if i think he'd it'd be more badass if he was able to do all the shit he did in like let's say batman or superman It'd be much more badass if he just did it in a fucking <laughs> Adam West Batman suit. Because they'd look at him and they'd be like, really? It's a threat and a war we must win. <laughs> See, I don't like, We're I don't know. a noose on the goose stepping goons from Berlin. <laughs> Do you actually know the lyrics? <laughs> Who will indeed heed the call of America? Who rise or fall, give his all for America? Who's here to prove that we can? The Spangled Man. Like how that dude's just kind of like, yeah, it's a good song. <laughs> no, fucking it is a good song. It's a catchy song. I, I got this on my fucking ringtone. Now, I <laughs> loved this the idea that they had him knocking out Hitler because that's a reference to the old comics. And it's like, it's such a, a cheesy way to do it in a good way. Like, I love it. It's so, so ridiculous. See, like, I don't know, like, in one hand, like, I do think it's ridiculous and it's just kind of fun and stuff. But on the other hand, like, I don't like how they, uh, at the beginning, they, they made his character kind of, well, I think I guess it makes sense. Well, I don't think it does make sense. You have this, you have this guy that you put with a serum that could beat the shit out of a lot of people and be a really good aid to your army. But you're using him as like more of a poster boy than anything, Ooh. you know? Well, it makes sense. I mean, they they say it in the way like he's too valuable for like the money that they spend. And if he just got killed like in one battle, it would be like kind of what's the point? Like you end up having a lot of wars where it's more political than anything. Oh, that's true. Okay, yeah, that that makes sense then if they're using that logic. That that was probably in a uh, that was probably something that I was uh, that happened a couple minutes ago. This is poor camera work. The the whole setup like right here the shot there no when when they do the legs kick the camera pans down so you can't see what color panties are going. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I mean, they gotta they gotta pander to a PG thirteen audience because that's what movie that's what superhero films do. <laughs> and I don't know, like that's that's something that what was it? I was watching a, a PG thirteen movie the other day. I forgot the finest hours and like it was so obvious that they were pandering to a pg-13 audience so it's like yeah i mean i mean there's still they could still be good films without it there's hodge <laughs> oh gosh <laughs> see like yeah the, I, this is my thing right here who's bringing tomatoes <laughs> like you like, uh, you're 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 in a war. Like, why would you waste perfectly good tomatoes throwing it at Captain America? Yeah, I mean, like, the girls back. <laughs> I, I I understand why they they don't really want to see him. I guess, but like, still, it seemed a bit disrespectful <laughs> what they were doing. You know, a whole nod to the the comics of him being an artist. That was a nice little thing. I don't know about the uh, if I've ever seen the monkey in anything before, if that's like a specific reference or not. If you know uh, anybody listening, leave a comment below. Tommy. Howard the Duck. <laughs> Howard the Duck. Yeah, good reference with that, that monkey. That that would have been that would have been pretty cool if he was drawing Howard the Duck. There's probably some. Uh, if there's not some, like somebody should make like a, a scene where they make this scene, but like they Photoshop a picture of like Howard the Duck that he's drawing instead. <laughs> so it's just pretty. It would just be fun. I'd be like, oh look, it's Howard the Duck. Honestly, I thought that was a waste. Like at the end of Guardians of the Galaxy, you stay for the credit, you see Howard the Duck. I'm like, really? I laughed my ass off. I was not expecting that in the slightest bit. No, I'm I... like, you gotta be kidding me. They put Howard the fucking duck in here. Like, oh god. No, I I thought it was really funny, and like, I I mean, I liked it. It's just like, 
I, I sat in the credits just to kind of see that. And I'm like, oh, okay. I could have just saw that online. Like I didn't need to see it for the first time, but whatever. <laughs> you know, what? Did, I didn't expect them to do any like tie-ins yet, at least. They're probably going to do one with Guardians of the Galaxy too. So I would think at least, or at least hope or whatever. Got yeah, a, that's no super soldier right there. <laughs> I like, okay. I wonder like, I don't know in the comic books, like was his blood able to be like transferred into somebody else? Like, could you take his blood and kind of get the serum out of it? Cause they, like, they referenced that a little bit, but like, was that ever a thing in the comic books? Like was somebody able to uh, take I his blood? I think so. I think that they, um, in the comics, they made it to where like, you can make like the offshoots of it, but you can never actually get like the full formula. And that was always why you had like, uh, like, I mean, kind of what they did with the uh, incredible Hulk. Like, you can get really close, but you can never actually just give him like a blood transfusion or anything. Uh, I don't know. I mean, he might have. I, I I don't know off the top of my head. I mean, because that would be that would be a pretty like interesting. Like if if somehow like in a future film, like if Thanos were to kill Captain America, he would be able to transfer his blood and use like his serum for like his slaves or soldiers, so that way all the soldiers would basically have the abilities of Captain America. You know. But, you know, that's just like, that's just a, I don't want to say wishful thinking, but that's just a, th- a, th- a thought. It's, it's a, uh, it's pretty cool uh, how um they kind of, uh they kind of uh had Captain America take his, uh not, not anger. He wanted, he wanted so badly to be in the army. And now this was kind of the tipping point, you know, he actually finally gets to do something, you know, worth, you know, doing and stuff. And it kind of, uh, it makes everything that he was fighting for at the beginning of the film uh, worth it and stuff yeah. like that. And then Peggy's just kind of like, oh, he's hot. <laughs> like she kind of just she like, falls every, off a little bit here. Every every time like she looks like, she has that inner thought that she's like, you have no idea how wet you're making me right now. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And I hated, well. Oh, it is raining out. <laughs> well, I'll. I don't want to bring this up now because it comes up later in the film, but I'll I'll bring it up later when it comes up. But is that okay? That's supposed to be is that smoke or is that like sand or what or is that the rain? Because I, I, I'm not sure what that like uh, that's supposed to be. I think, I think it's, it's just dust like from the fucking Lars. Oh, uh, like I, thought, I always thought that it was just like misty fog, kind of. Maybe. As like their camp's not on fire or anything, so. Well, I would hope not. I mean, they yeah. seem pretty calm for their camp being on fire. <laughs> like he's more focused Good on way to bring Howard back into the mix here. Yeah, I mean, why would Stark put his life through this? So I never go. <laughs> well, he's a patriot. I mean, he's he's working for the government. And I think it's also to kind of well, because I don't know. Because, I mean, uh, Tony Stark and Howard Stark are very, like, different from each other, I guess, as far as their characters. So maybe, like, because I don't know. I couldn't imagine Tony Stark doing this. So, like, maybe it's kind of to show, like, Howard was more of a, a helper, I guess. Well, you know? Stark would probably just fly in and do it himself. Yeah, that's true. If he was born at this time and stuff. I, I know I, a lot of people, when this movie came out, a lot of people were theorizing that Peggy was going to end up being uh, Tony's mother in this universe instead and whatever. And it was like, they make some changes now and then, but they wouldn't go with that drastic of a change. I don't, I don't ever remember them. I don't know in the Iron Man films that they ever reference Tony's mother, uh, but not really. They, it's kind of just like, cause she really wasn't like that big in the comics all that much either. So Actually, so, I, mean, I think they've changed her a couple times in the comics. She was like a couple different people here and there, but usually the same character. She's just like Mary something or other or whatever. Like, Right, of course, because every fucking female character in any comic book has to be named Mary for some Mary, reason. Mary, Martha, Moira. Yeah, it has, has those M's. And like... I never understood this uh, mentality that like leaders have where like, oh, jump up the uh, um, workforce of like 60 percent. Like, I understand that he says they have more soldiers and stuff, but it's like, wouldn't the 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 thought process be like you want to get 
um, as much quality work as somebody as you can, because if they're fatigued, they're not going to have much quality work. So I don't know. It, it's like, it just seems odd to me. I, I get that they're slaves and whatever. So it's here just... we go. First time seeing Dum Dum. Dum Dum. Dum Dum Dugan. Speaking of Robocop, there he is. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what I was thinking. I was like, why the fuck is Robocop in this movie? You know what, though? Now that I'm thinking about this, just seeing uh, Neil McDonough right there just pisses me off what Arrow's turned into. <laughs> God damn it, Damien Dark. I Fuck that show. I've never... The only thing I kind of watch... I kind of watch Gotham because my... Uh, my family. Oh, just, that show sucks. Well, uh, honestly, a lot of people say it sucks, and I don't think it's that bad. I, I mean, I, I, it's not a show that I would really watch. <laughs> I like this part right here, where he's just like, "Hey guys," and he just kicks the fuck out of their truck. Um, like, That's RoboCop to you, fucker. <laughs> but you know, I never really watched Arrow because I'm never really much for the only uh, ones I watched. I, I did watch Daredevil, like the first season. I haven't seen the second, but. Oh, you gotta watch it. For everybody out there, anybody who hasn't watched season two, it's so good. Yeah, Second I, I, season is so much better than the first season. Oh, uh, well, in that case, I'll have to watch it as soon as I can. Because I have Netflix, so I can uh, I can watch it whenever. There's so many. And uh, double check in just to be sure about those people that are following the, the stream and just want to make sure that they're on the exact same moment. Right now, Cap is uh, hanging around the tanks and we're going to get a, a shot in a moment where he's going to be breaking into the compound and such. So he is, I'll give you uh, an actual like flat out cut of something um, in a second. We're getting a cut right about, he's going to open up a door. There you go. You just opened up the door and that that guy's knocked out. So <laughs> <laughs> just to make sure if everybody's keeping up, same. We have a uh, Hydra base is now infiltrated. And this is actually one of my favorite parts of the movie. Uh, it shows off that he's somebody who can do the stealth thing and he can do it all without that, like the best version of the shield too. And he's got a gun. Like I was not expecting that they would show Captain America literally killing people in this movie. I was surprised. Uh, I got I... nobody bitched and complained like they did when Batman goes and kills someone. See, I buy Captain America killing people, but Batman should never kill. Well, here here's the thing. I I I'm I'm never one. I know the Batman character is very I am against killing and stuff like that, but they changed it in in a way that I feel like was was fine with me cuz I mean, yeah, he kills people, but it's not like He's sitting there and breaking people's necks. Well, actually, uh, kind of during the one fight scene in the uh, building. Okay, maybe he does kill people. But the point is, <laughs> is like it, it never really bothered me that much. A lot of people, because I have a friend who like his big problem with DC is that they're very like they don't really like killing people, even though they want to go for a darker tone than Marvel does. While Marvel, while it has more of a lighter tone, just kills whoever the fuck they want, you know. So I don't know. I like that line. That's right such there. a good joke, yeah. And he's like, because nobody, it doesn't make sense to them at all. They're like, wait, what? How does that work? Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm fine. I think like right now, because Captain America has a gun, only because he's not as um, combat ready as like you know everyone else is and stuff. He's not like the Captain America we necessarily know. He's more just, you know, he's just has a gun and he's just a normal soldier right now, even though he's like has four times the strength or whatever. Later on in the film, he does more extreme things, I should say. He starts learning more about his abilities. Well, plus he's, uh, you know, he's a soldier. So it's like you go, you sign up for the war, you know, you're going to kill people. And uh, Batman's more of a good Samaritan than a, a soldier. I mean, he kind of can he considers himself a soldier, but it's not the same sort of thing. And somebody like Dum Dum Dugan here, he's just kind of like, let's run shit over and let's, uh, yeah, that'd be fun as fuck. I would love to do this. I have to admit that. Just, just to get in a tank and just start shooting like a bunch of uh, cars and stuff. Yeah, why not? Especially I... if I know that there are Nazis on the other end. What you know? Fuck them. <laughs> yeah, I'd probably do it if given the opportunity. I mean, if Sean, I... is this the part where? Uh, Mr. Smith should have just been, like, converting all the other, the Helen Commandos into other Agent Smiths. This is the part where he's thinking, shit, 
Mr. Anderson has found me. Fucking Neo. Fucking look at this fucking dwarf with his fucking stupid glasses. <laughs> Fuck. You can get the most beadiest man on the fucking planet, too. He's perfect for the role, man. Yeah, I suppose. A sniveling snitch. Mm. I see this you shot is so much better than the fucking round one. You think so? I don't I don't I don't I don't think so. I think the round one the is I think the round one looks nice. I mean if they were to if they were to redesign the the shaped one where it's like with the same metal as they would uh the round one, I think it'd be fine. But as it looks right now, it looks too much like because the, the the round one looks more like a Captain America shield. Like this one just kind of looks like a shield with the American colors on it, you know? Like I don't know how it is. I guess it's just because I'm so used to having him have a circular shield that it just kind of uh made me have a bias towards that, I guess. Well, I mean, originally they they even show it in the one shot of the first comic. Like that that is the first shield that they ever had, and then they ended up going with the circular one. But that's more my iconic. So, mm-hmm. right, you got to go with the, the circular one. It's because it's like a frisbee, you know. Yeah, it makes and, it and like yes. you couldn't throw this shield. When Captain America throws his mighty shield, we had a big payoff for this scene oh, with an entire oh, film. Oh. Actually, two films because now the Civil you? War. We got uh, as soon as this scene happened in the theaters, it was just like, oh man, they're going fucking Winter Soldier eventually. This is sweet. Maybe we kind of assumed they were going to do it anyway because it was in the comics and such. But you can look on the right there; you can see the plans for that uh, ship. Do you reckon Bucky ever whacked off with his robotic arm? Wait, I don't think he has a chance, man. He they they put him back in cryostasis like immediately afterward. Do you reckon that's why he's so pissed off in Civil War? Because <laughs> he hasn't gotten uh, any kind of a release in like seventy years. Yeah, I, I, I would be shit. Okay, so I do have an, a question about that. Like this serum, does it cause like uh, it, it can uh, delay like aging, right? Yeah, like to an extent, not like um, not like you're immortal or anything, but like yeah, because because if because Bucky like if he had that serum at this time. And he was alive for like seventy years. It must age really slowly. Then, well, he they keep putting him in uh, like the cryogenic oh, chamber. Ten- chambers. Okay, so yeah. that's that's mostly what calms him down. True. Oh, this is when his face falls off, right? Yes, Cerritos. Well, I mean, he he takes his face off, but you know, this is when the movie turns into John Travolta and um, Nicolas Cage. <laughs> <laughs> like legit that might be my favorite movie of all time like face off face off i don't it's certainly not the best but like every time i watch the movie i just get such a kick out of it and it's like i just love it so much oh he's got a droopy eye now look uh see oh. this pissed me off in the movie i was just kind of like they're finally starting to like interact and you're gonna fucking take them apart yeah the red skull like i mean he's fine in this film, it's just like, I feel like he's just a little bit weak, but it's it's okay though. I mean, he's like he's supposed to be the origin story type thing. Ooh, look at that, that nose job. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, Red Skull, the... the Red Skull in the nineteen ninety one movie looked so much better. Do you think? I was just gonna say, I buy the special effects for this. I think it actually looks like. Looks like it's his normal face. Yeah, this the, the 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 makeup is pretty well done. Unless I mean, wasn't I? I'm pretty sure it was makeup because it looks so natural. If that's CGI, it, it, it's even more impressive because it looks more natural than it should look. You know, his nose might be CGI. Yeah, that might be that case. But I'm sure the rest of it's just like a bald cap and red paint. You know what is CGI? Yeah. The new Spider Man. The new. Sp- Oh my yeah, god! I'm hearing good things though, man. I'm hearing. Good I'm not things. hearing good things. I'm hearing bad things. The fact that the costume is CGI. Well, okay. Here, here's my thing. Like, I, I, I try to avoid as much like talk about the movies until I actually see them for myself. Um, but I saw the trailer and Spider Man looks fine. Um, it was cool that he was in there, and I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see what his role overall is going to be. Because, I mean, I'm not really much of a reader, but my dad has talked about how, like, in the comic book, Spider-Man actually sides with Tony Stark 
first, and he actually is one of the first to reveal his identity, but then he switches sides to Captain America. So I'm wondering if they're going to go that route with it, or if they're just going to have him show up out of nowhere, you know? But this is a this is another uh, scene that I like because this is one of the first times that Captain America has actually uh, exposed himself to uh, his own strengths as a hero. You know, well, right now it's not him; it's Bucky just walking on the thing. Oh no, Bucky! Go, go get it! Ah, oh, he got it. You know, and I think that's a I think that's a nice looking. Uh, it's a it's a nice it's a nice scene that uh, he sets himself up for. You know. And and that that leap is like it's like a fucking uh Indiana Jones type leap where you just have to you just gotta run for it. If you're Bucky at this point, you're thinking, oh man, I'm gonna go watch my friend just jump into a fucking <laughs> pit. He, he has no, at this point he has no idea. Well, I mean he knows kind of, but like he doesn't understand that he had powers like that. So it's like he's just essentially just watching his friend commit suicide in front of him. <laughs> Like, and he's I, like, dude, what are you doing? And it, it sucks for Captain America. And, like, it's funny how, like, they brought this up, but then, like, ten seconds later, like, oh, they show up. Like, did their news of their death travel that fast? Like, Well, this movie plays a little bit around with time. Like, that's another issue I have with it. They, we have this um, upcoming montage, and it's supposed to be, like, two years or something, and it feels like it's, like, a week. Well, Tony, even Rocky had a montage. <laughs> True. Speaking I, of uh, doing Captain America, Team America, that'll end up being a fan track down the line, probably. Oh, God, that would me. That would be awesome. I, I actually, I actually recently watched both of those, both the first Rocky and then the Team America. Uh, I mean, I've seen Team America before, but I had never seen the first Rocky, so I watched it and I was like, "Oh, okay, this is cool. This is back when Sylvester Stallone was good," <laughs> you know. Um, but Team America, it's it's one of my, it's probably one of my favorite like comedies like of all time. It's so good, and this is a, this is this is a nice looking, um, nice looking scene here, where it just have all the soldiers. And my question is, how do they all get back? Like, I understand that you're not really supposed to care. Like, they're just back and that's it. But it's like, where were they? Where were they captured? Like, what, in Germany, right? Mm-hmm. So, well, like, um, or might have been somewhere else. I actually can't remember off the top of my head. But Okay, well, it was... Yeah, they just sort of walk their way back and it's like, yeah, I'd be tired as fuck. Like, <laughs> not only that, but, like, first of all, how long was it gone before, like, you were there? Like, did you have to cross an ocean to get there? And I, I think that Bucky in this scene looks a little, like, in one shot, he looked a little bit like Oscar Isaac if he was, like, skinnier. <laughs> like, I don't know Poor why. Amron. And, and it's so out of place. You see that guy with the blue shirt? Like, everybody else has, like, green or, like, weird, like, like kind of, like, uh, tree-like colors. And then that guy with the blue shirt is just so out of place compared to everybody else's shirt. It's distracting me right now. <laughs> And but I, but I like I like the scene where like even though he saved all these people, Captain America still wants to turn himself in for you know like breaking the rules and stuff. And yeah, he's such a boy scout; it's so ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, it, it's that's exactly who he should be. That's not that not to say that that's a bad thing. That's a good thing because no. that's totally Cap. Cap is the dude that will be like. <laughs> that's such a lame joke. <laughs> I hate this. That they applaud him? I hate it so much. Captain America. Let's hear it for Captain America. (laughs) Yeah. I'm a fucking joke, man. Yeah. (laughs) That is probably my least favorite scene in the whole film. Just that idea of let's hear it for Captain America. But, you know, people were cheesier back then and still. You know, and and I and I like how like when he's being presented with the medal right now. Stanley line. I thought he'd be taller. Fuck yourself, Stan. God. <laughs> That's one not thing I like about Stanley not being in any other Netflix fucking shit. Let's deal with well, all these fucking blimps. Blimps? I don't I don't know. Blimp blimps were popular, I guess, back in like uh, World War II. Cause I mean a good old Zeppelin hour. <laughs> I don't I don't know if they invented helicopters back then, so blimps would probably be like um 
a way to like gain uh like surveillance on like um your enemies and stuff. Right, the shield, right? This is where they make the shield, right? Out of this fucking yeah, special I think metal, this is, uh, right? Or actually, the, and yeah, it it's not, not be being same. replicated. What, what is metal? The the metal is very rare, and it hasn't been replicated like in like seventy years. Mm-hmm. Right, the vibranium. It, th- that's what it's fucking called, the vibranium. That's yeah, Natalie like... Dormer, by the way, for those checking. And from oh. Game of Thrones yeah. and uh, whatnot. But the vibranium, yeah, that's um the tie in to Avengers Age Ultron and the whole thing with uh Black Panther. Oh. Cause Wakanda is like the source for it, and that's why Black Panther's outfit's gonna be kind of like ultra fitted with a little bit of vibranium and then we're gonna have um I don't I don't uh, wanna sound racist or nothing, but the French guy and the Asian guy are the best in this group. No, that's not racist. That's like the opposite of racist. <laughs> well, I mean, it, you know the rule. It's not racist if it's positive. <laughs> you know, I mean. It, Typical Sean saying that the white guys aren't the best. <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't, you know, I like um, See, look, Rogers Gabriel Jones quite changed a bit. When he got bigger. It's, like, it's more combed over. Like He's got more of it. It's more fuller. Well, he probably like wanted to look his best when he went to the bar to drink with his friends for some reason. And why is it that now he like like cuz later on in the film he points out the fact that he can't drink and get drunk, but it's like why didn't like they I don't I know why they didn't bring this up right now, but it's like you would think that he knows now that like at this moment that he can't get drunk. But like he doesn't bring it up or anything. I guess it's because it's out of place or something, but that's just something yeah. else to think about. Plus, it's more about the camaraderie of the scene. It's like, let's all just get together. Let's all drink our beers. Why the fuck, uh, fuck are you drinking alone? That 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 is a good question. But for, I think for, fuck that I, question. Cause... At the very least, I read into that as Bucky's drinking on his own because he's got that torture that's in his head already. And he's kind of like sorting it out. But I mean, it's I don't know if they've ever friends. actually said anything about it or if it's just like Bucky is uh, maybe he's trying to be like that. The cool loner. You know, that's how he gets to those threesomes. <laughs> maybe it's the uh maybe the serum that they gave if they were hinting at that, like is like affecting him a little bit, like differently mm-hmm. than it was capped because it wasn't the same type of serum, you know. So maybe he just didn't want to be around people because he knew something was up with him, you know? So that could be it. <laughs> I like how I like I like how it's kinda like the reverse roles right here. That's alright, dude. You've got to bang Jenna Coleman. <laughs> it's all right. You had a threesome while Give me I a was choice between uh, Jenna Coleman and Haley Atwell. I'm going Jenna Coleman. No, I'm going to go Jenna Coleman as well. I'm. I I don't know. I you're I going don't... Steve Rogers, right? <laughs> no, I'm going Steve Rogers. Yes. No. Um. I don't. I don't know because I'm. I'm not very like familiar with like act actresses or actors all that much. Like I'm trying to get more into that. Like I know basics and stuff, but I don't really know where they're from or what they really look like. I only know the one shot they were in. So, Jenna Coleman was in Doctor Who. Well, oh, still I, is don't, Doctor Who. I don't know her from there. I just know her from. Oh my God, Jenna Coleman's cute. Let me look <laughs> out, see uh, your Google image search. Uh, a lot of people love sexy. Natalie Dormer, and in this scene, I you know. I'll admit, if Natalie Dormer's popping up and going, I want to thank you for the country, I'll be like, all right. This is another, th- okay, this is the thing I was bringing up earlier that really made me mad, was like, I understand, like, look, she she is very grateful that, that she brought all the men back, in, but like, she seems like she's grateful for other women and not her. Like, she's just using this as an excuse to basically make out with Captain America. Oh, she totally is. But, yeah, she's but a... that's not the thing that makes me mad. It's the thing that makes me mad is that the fact that uh, Peggy comes in and sees it, and all of a sudden we have this conflict between Peggy and Captain America that lasts all of five fucking minutes, because then she sees a picture of her in, like, a watch he has, and she's like, oh, he truly does love me, <laughs> you know? like Yeah, yeah it, that's my issue with the, the romance in this film, is it's very, like, CW. Like, oh my god, you saw me kissing somebody else, and we're not even dating, but we're going to have a whole back and forth. If this was a CW show, this would be an entire goddamn season. It pisses <laughs> this, me off. If this was a CW show, but they would have killed off the main female lead, so Oliver Queen can get with Felicity, and then, yeah. <laughs> Fuck that bullshit. Moral forever. I don't even know, like... 
the only shows I know are on the CW. I think Arrow's on the CW. Yep. And, and Arrow, I, Flash, Le- uh, Legends of Tomorrow, which is basically Doctor Who, which, yeah. Oh. Here's your, uh, your S.H.I.E.L.D. scene. Yeah. Smallville used to be on CW, and that explains a lot. I never watched Smallville. I heard that, uh, what's his name? Uh, the guy who plays Lex Luthor was really good. Yeah, he was cool. He was the only positive. Oh, only positive thing about that show? Nah, Erica Durance was a good Lois Lane. Towards the end. At the beginning. Was the old Shield. Like, some of these designs are so ridiculous. Like, like I feel like the, 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 uh, the production designers of the film essentially, like, just thought of whatever the fuck they wanted to as, like, Oh, we could just pass it off as like a first draft of the shield. And like, cause it looks so impractical, some of those designs. Like, why would somebody think that that was a good idea in making it? And I understand the whole in retrospect, when you look at something, it, it's not really that good, but they probably had the designs laid out and shit, you know? Uh, now, this scene pisses me off. That, that she shoots and it's like, of course, she's not going to actually put him in any danger. She's not going to do any of that kind of stuff. But it's like they played that moment up in trailers so much because they wanted her to be like, she's a badass chick and she won't take shit from no man. And I'm like, I get it. But at the same time, that's making her seem like a bitch more than anything. And Peggy shouldn't be a bitch. She should just stand up for herself. I fucking hate the uniform. Fucking You hate this it. uniform? Fucking hates it. I prefer I, I... Um, the Avengers. This is the best uniform he's had so far, other than Age of Ultron. No, that was all wrong. I, I, I don't know. I'm, I, I think that honestly, I kind of would side with uh, Sean on this one. Like the uniform in this, I don't want to say I hate it. I just don't think that it holds up to the other, uh, other ones. Like I think his his outfit in the Winter Soldier was more badass than this one. Oh, that was cool. It, it was like a stealthier kind of uh... stealthier kind of suit. Yeah, but they're. I don't and like the fact least... that the wings are stickers. <laughs> <laughs> I do like this. I do like this right here where he just throws a shield. Boop. Yeah. And, but then then I think if there were other people in those trees, wouldn't that have alerted them? You know? So, like, I think he did that out of, like, assuming that there was only one person in the trees. Because if there were any other people, they would have been shooting down and at least taken out some of those guys, you know? Oh, fair play. Captain America is so camouflaged. True. <laughs> yeah, if he had, like, uh, green and stuff, he'd be, like, Captain Ireland. Fucking French guy's great. Oh, and look Here at this. Here we go, our, our ham-fisted, I love Peggy, but, but wait, <laughs> don't film that. <laughs> don't film that. Uh, why, why, by the way, why would he be embarrassed by that? Like... Is it is he because like he thinks other people are gonna watch this? The only thing I could think of is that he knows other people other than Peggy are gonna watch it, so he's like, "Oh, I don't want them knowing I like Peggy." But like, who gives a shit? Like, why did you feel the need to like hide it away? You know. There's our 3D shot. Mm-hmm. When you went, did you guys see this in theaters when it first came out? Yep. Yep. Opening night. Did you guys see it in 3D or was it just normal D? I was still on the 3D bandwagon at that point, and I was just kind of like. And like a shot like this, it was just like we don't we don't need the three D in these kind of movies anymore. Yeah, I mean, there's only been a couple movies that three D's been like worth it, and this actually was pretty much the first movie where I went, you know, do I really want to spend that extra like two three bucks just to see the shield fly at me a couple times? And lately, I've been going more into the whole like I'd rather see the the standard four K one than. To, to waste any money on 3D. Mm-hmm. Although I've got a, uh, I got my tickets for Civil War already, and I got the 3D ones because uh, fuck it, why not? We're we're probably this seeing dude's that. Dead. To be fair, didn't you watch like Star Wars in 3D? Then you watched it in like standard, and then you watched it in IMAX, and then I watched uh Star what Force Awakens? You mean? Yeah, yeah. Force Awakens, I saw IMAX, and then um, then I saw a, a standard one. Which that was kind of cool because I actually could see the differences between the two of them, and Star Wars, yeah, that's a that's a three D movie. Yeah, I could I can understand why that would be a three D movie. The only other movies I could see in three D, like a film like Life of Pi or a film like Gravity, which like yeah. I don't really like Gravity too much, but like as a visual spectacle in like a three D surround sound thing, it's like you you just feel there, you know, and the the effects are so fantastic in it that it like kind of warrants it. Because I can't remember the last movie I saw in 3D. It's been so long. Because 3D is so, like, because if we're going to see a movie at night, 
it's like ten dollars fifty cents. So three D, I'm paying like fifteen bucks per ticket. When mm-hmm. I could just wait the next day, see a movie at noon without 3D and save like seven dollars, you know. So it, it like it this comes is down a nasty scene. This is fucking. This looks cheap as fuck. I, I do, you I think... do agree. The, the the effects didn't look as good as this scene as like in other film, in the other films, you know. I mean, you can tell that it's CG. like that they're on top of that and they got a green screen behind them, but I don't think it's too bad. Well, I. I... See, I don't know, because like in someone like I think it's because with Bucky, you can see his hair flowing. Right. So you can see the wind thing. But with the other characters, they're wearing helmets. So you couldn't really tell that there was any wind with them except for, you know, with Bucky and stuff. So if Bucky, Bucky, Bucky wearing... dies. Well, apparently dies. Apparently. My it's friend like so cheap. We 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 were watching my friend and I when we were watching Winter Soldier, he uh he sit there. He's like. You know, tell me why the Winter Soldier looks a lot like Bucky. And I'm just sitting there like, I really shouldn't tell him. <laughs> and he's like, you know, it might be Bucky, but it might not be. And then, like, when it was Bucky, he was like, oh, okay. You know? Because, <laughs> yeah, like, I mean, I, I, I never knew the comics, so I never knew Bucky was a Winter Soldier. And, you know, he didn't either. But it didn't really matter because it was pretty, like, obvious and stuff. Even with uh, Winter Soldier wearing his mask and shit. See, and I was going with this idea that, like... I already knew that he becomes Winter Soldier. I already know that he eventually falls into some kind of a chasm and all that. But um, I did not expect it to be this scene, actually. I thought it was going to be the end of the movie. So when this ends up happening in a little bit, and again, if you're listening to this and you've never seen the movie before, what the hell's wrong with you? Why, you know? But uh, happening in this scene, did not expect that to happen. So I was a little bit shocked, but did see it coming eventually at some point. Well, was it... Was it a was it a um like a shock as in oh I'm kind of like glad that they did that then or was it like more of a shock like man they did that now type thing because more more so oh damn they they called him off or well, you know quote unquote called him off already and they still have like at least one more big action scene uh scene left uh, I mean when when they got to this point I was just you know he's hanging off the edge I'm like oh okay they're gonna do it here instead because oh. there's no way they're, they're there's not no going way he's to gonna do that oh no. No, Bucky! Oh, well, whatever. <laughs> uh, that is why Han Solo is still alive. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know the difference between Bucky and uh, Han? Bucky didn't get a lightsaber through his chest. <laughs> also, Han's dead, so <laughs> that's, uh, that's a difference. Plus, this whole, like, Norway or wherever they're in right now doesn't explode like the Starkiller base. Mm-hmm. And even if, like, Han Solo were to survive the lightsaber and the astronomical fall that he suffered, for him to have gotten off of that ship in the condition he was in is pretty unlikely. Oh, this is a great scene where Tommy Lee just nicks his fucking steak. Uh, Yo, you know what? When I saw this, immediately afterward, I was like, I need steak, man. Like, this looks so good, doesn't it? Yeah. And you know what? I already ate today when we were recording this. And we haven't even gotten to the scene yet with the steak. Like, we're, you know, now we're getting it. But, uh-huh. like, I want steak already, knowing how good this looks. Steak and the potatoes. Uh, and oh, broccoli. damn it. it. And what sucks for me is that, because I haven't eaten yet. Um, <laughs> so, like, after this, I'm just going to scrunch whatever I fucking can from my fridge and just be like, I, I want to take, like... I don't really watch the Food Network that much, but whenever I watch the Food Network, I'll get like a plain turkey and cheese sandwich and I'll pretend it's the greatest thing of all time, you know? <laughs> I'll pretend it's whatever they're making just so that it tastes better. Um, oh, and I, oh, a little eat, bit of salt, a little bit of pepper this on is, this. This is why you don't fucking trust fucking vegetarians. <laughs> Sorry, Caroline, if you're listening to this, right? <laughs> <laughs> You're See, weird. Caroline, if you want to be uh, a true American now that you live here, you got to eat that steak. Because mm-hmm. look at the steak is cooked perfectly too. Like I'm a I'm a medium well guy. I'm Same. a medium well as well. Yeah, I, I am as well. It's yeah. <laughs> take that wego with your medium rare. <laughs> my uh, I, I think my my brother's more of a medium rare. My my dad likes it well done. He doesn't like any red in his meat. Uh, which that's so funny though that you guys had the same reaction to this because I'm literally like watching the movie in theaters going. Fuck man, this popcorn's good, but the steak looks amazing. Like, yes. And I usually don't do that in movies. There's something about the steak. Maybe it's the fact that Tommy Lee Jones is clearly liking it. 
Yeah, yeah like you could tell he's enjoying it. How many times do you reckon he, he took this? Like, this I, I bet you he intentionally fucked up some of his lines, so they had to get a new steak for him each yeah. time. So that way, like, he's like, well, I've had my meal for the day. <laughs> I've had about five steaks in me on 30 takes. <laughs> you know? He, instead of calling him Zola, he's just like, all right, Toby. And they're like, you can't call him by the real <laughs> actor's name. And he's like, I guess we need a new steak. <laughs> uh I just, I don't know. It's just like something about it looks good. I don't know when the last time, because this this was what? This movie was in 2011, I believe? Yeah, 2011. Okay. Like, I can't remember the last time I was in a theater and I saw someone eating something and thought, holy shit, that looks delicious, you know? Like, I'm trying to remember back to the movies I've seen. Like, I can't remember the last time someone ate something that looked good. Well, actually, no. The other day I was watching this Netflix movie. It was like this this horror thriller called hush and this woman was making like a uh, jambalaya in her house or something so fake uh, the, the whole plane yeah it's uh, especially the tire now i did like how they had the shadow motion but like now you can clearly tell it's a green screen it's just it just looks so awkward but you know it's i mean it, it's fine it's like i i i can uh think like at this point the Marvel movies did better as the visual effects went on and stuff. And since this was kind of, I mean, what was it? Iron Man was kind of the first, one of the first phase ones. And then it came Captain America. Or did Thor come before Captain America? Incredible. It was, uh, was Iron Man, Incredible Hulk, Iron Man 2, Thor, Cap. Oh, okay. So it was the first time. Wow. I can't even, I honestly don't remember the Incredible Hulk that well. Like, I, I know. That's your favorite, isn't it, Sean? Yes. Really? I mean, like, mm-hmm. I'm not. I'm not like, you know, dissing it Edward Norton's Hulk, dude, is the best comic book film of all time. Next door to Batman vs. Superman. (laughs) Did you really love that? I can hear the comments below just pouring in already. I love Batman vs. Superman. Oh, really? Well, that's that's great, man. I mean, like, so many people don't like it. So it's like, I it's kind of a breath of fresh air. Because, like, I know what it's like to be in, like, I don't want to say minority. Because, like, personally, like, I loved Man of Steel. And, like, Man of Steel was one of those films where, like, you either loved it or you hated it. And it seemed like everybody I knew hated it. So I was like, oh, man, sorry. I I hated it the first time around. Second time around, it was all right. Third time around. But speaking of that, now, this is maybe the sixth time that I've seen Captain America, the first Avenger. I I saw it once in theaters. I've seen it, uh, you know, when I bought the movie watched it again when um we did the movie club where we did the marathon saw it again when i did the avengers marathon so this is probably the sixth time and the same stuff is still bugging me about it though like the same this is one of our only scenes where we see some kind of actual like chemistry between he and and peggy where i buy it yeah it, 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 it seems more believable in this scene but like this really is the only scene i can think of where it's believable at all like well, I mean, in, in some situations, I, uh, I think it was kind of believable towards the beginning, but like after the whole transformation thing, this was the last scene that they kind of had and the scene where Cap's about to die. Like, I think that that was pretty OK, but it didn't build up well. So it kind of felt a little bit like, OK, we get it. You're sad over him, but you didn't really have that good of a relationship to begin with. You know, I can't get drunk. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> Fucking cry, baby. <laughs> I mean, Dude, I would love to wake up the next day and not have a hangover, fucking child. Yeah, it's not just not having a hangover though; it's not getting drunk to begin with. Well, you so. know, you you don't go out to get drunk; you go out to socialize with your friends. Granted, his friend died, but you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's not socializing in this scene. <laughs> Who the fuck is he talking to? Yeah, it's just. See, it's, they still. Uh... Got... Oh, sorry. Go Dude ahead. Arrow. They still got the Asian man. You know, they still got Gabe Jones. He's the man. They got all the characters, you know, and still got the black guy, the only black guy in the movie. That's Gabe Jones. Oh, (laughs) yeah. Is he real? Like, is he really the only black guy in this movie? Oh, well, yeah, actually, he is. That I can think of. There's uh, there's people in the background and stuff, but he's the only actual like he's the only one with main character other than the very last scene of the movie. Oh, got it right. You know, like, I'm not really, I'm not really much like, you know, I, I don't really necessarily care about that type of stuff. I, I just like, you know, if an actor is the best for the role, that's who she should cast, you know? 
Yeah, well, I mean, this is the type of thing where during this time frame, the, the characters that they have from this era... There it is. I was wondering when they were going to throw that in. The, the Willem scream? Yeah. Uh, you know it's going to be. It's something like every action movie nowadays. Mm-hmm. It's it, so good. Is that, is that like, okay, I, I don't know. When was that, like, um, originated? Like, when did that first, like, happen? The Willem scream? The Willem scream? It's, um... It's in the Star Wars or Indie that started. No, I think... No, Star- it's it happened way before, before that. Star Wars. I think it was, like... It was like some black and white film or something, and I think it's a movie that has to do with like an alligator or a crocodile, but I can't remember offhand. I, it's yeah, definitely it's before Star, Star Wars. Wars. Yeah, because uh, almost every um, a lot of action movies definitely use it, and it, it's kind of funny. It's kind of like an Easter egg where if you can tell where it is, you're just like, oh look, it's the Wilhelm scream. Look how badass he is! Though. Like he's just well. Speaking taking... of Easter eggs, the stole but that. What was that? Speaking of Easter eggs, there's Thor, but they just chilling in the background, you know, <laughs> <laughs> this hammer. Yes, yeah, spray, your, spray your flamethrowers all around him, just not at him, just just around him. Okay. Well, so... you gotta you gotta capture him. You don't, you don't want to kill him. Oh no, you gotta capture him and explain your grand plan so you can break yeah. it. And, you know the whole James Bond thing in it. Dude, if I were a, a grandmaster villain, I would want to do that. I want to boast about how awesome i am you know what i would do i'd boast what? and i'd shoot him in the head well th- yeah that's the smart thing it's a, you go this is my plan it's totally gonna work because i'm gonna kill you right now boom Bang. <laughs> yeah and I, then you go that's so great he had that one moment where he could actually appreciate my grand plan and film now was i can that? do it I, w- I was watching a film the other kingsman? day it was kingsman yeah uh, kingsman right. is so good so good yeah it's, it's like so- I don't know, like uh, the, that was I'm, my I'm film really... of 20, 2015. Yeah, that that was my brother's as well. Uh, granted, he didn't see as many films as I did, but like, yeah, I really, I really do love Kingsman. It's, I, I really need to get that on Blu-ray. Actually, now that I think about it, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it, it's one of those movies that's like it knows what it is just from the first minute of the movie, and it just plays off. It's such a great homage film. And I, I thought at first from the trailers that uh, Samuel Jackson's lisp for his character was going to annoy me, but it it actually works a lot for the movie. Tell you what, thank God he didn't do that for Nick Fury. <laughs> okay, it would have annoyed me a lot more if it was done for Nick Fury and stuff. Howling Commandos kicking some ass. Uh-huh. I'm so glad that the Howling Commandos are in this movie. And I'm very glad that uh, for those who followed the animated series of Spider-Man back in the day, if you go back and you check out the old Captain America episodes from that, they've got like the Wizard and all this other kind of stuff for the um, the Defenders. I think no, they weren't the Defenders. They were oh, what was what's their name? Crap, blanking on their name. It wasn't the Howling Commandos because that's this team, but it's another group that worked with Cap during this time frame. Oh uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I know, I know what you're on about. Uh, That's going to annoy me. They are uh, trying to look at and that stupid power rings, right? The invaders. That's what I'm thinking of. Where it's Miss America, the Wizard, Union That's Jack, one Union Jack. <laughs> You've it's got uh, the Flaming Kid, like <laughs> all these other kind of stuff. This is really so terrible, but. They did the right choice here where they had the Helen Commandos instead because they're you buy into them being an actual military unit. Fucking Red Skull killing more people. He kills more people in this movie than I think any other villain, possibly. Probably. <laughs> I love that line from uh, Tommy Lee Jones where the guy, he was about to, you know, like be like, hey, if you cut one head off, you know, two more will grow. So he's like, hey, let's find two more. Um, Like, I, I, I wonder this though, like, what the the guns that they use right the, the, are they basically just evaporating them from existence or well, there's a theory that's going around for ever since this movie came out pretty much but more so now that we know about like the infinity stones and stuff it's the space gem that the tesseract actually is and if they took this from there more than likely it's probably that they're teleporting them to a different planet because oh, everybody Ash Planet and fucking Thor too. No, not that one. Because that one's tied to the ether. 
but the um the red skull is somebody who like they they got to bring him back at some point and i'm assuming he comes back in infinity war and at the end here I mean, you know we're 20 minutes or whatever uh, before oh, yeah. it ends up happening red skull is frozen in time as well right he's he comes back quite a bit in the comics and he fades away in this in a way that it's like they got to end up bringing him back. And I think that their, their way to get around that is to just have it to where these evaporating people are actually just being teleported. Yeah. And, but I mean, that makes sense. And that's what I kind of thought a little bit, like if they were going to do something like that, where it's not necessarily killing them, quote unquote, they're more so like that scene where he swings across the fucking chain and you don't see him land. (laughs) <laughs> the next scene he's just fucking sprinting after the fucking plane <laughs> yeah it's uh yeah it's there, there, there's little things like that this car is just like benny from fucking friend roger rabbit that's how much cgi it is well you know what see this is one of those things where we had the russo brothers in winter soldier and they amped up captain america so much more than this but i think part of the issue with this movie is just their choice of director it's joe johnston who I mean, if you are familiar with his work, you can kind of see that there's a little bit of a change of like, it might not be the first choice to go with because he did Jurassic Park three. Mm. He did Jumanji, <laughs> uh, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids and The Rocketeer. <laughs> so it's like he all he all had like this sort of cheesy, bad CGI kind of a thing. But this was at a time period, too, where they were trying to get people that they weren't going to sell as much on like i mean the marvel cinematic universe by this point already is a thing yet it's nothing compared to what it is now now we've got all these directors are like i want to be involved i want to do this i want to do that because it's a guaranteed nice paycheck and you get joe johnston kind of cheap <laughs> so you get some cheap cgi yeah i mean you know he uh He's he's also worked on a, a lot of stuff as far as like uh not as a director but like an effects artist like he the first two uh uh, uh Star Wars films he was a visual effects artist and stuff and those two were pretty impressive for their time and things um and yeah I I haven't uh I'm not really a huge fan of Jurassic Park three I think oh, it's just these fucking planes okay that that's something that I pointed out that really annoyed me. Why the fuck would planes have the cities they're traveling on labeled on them? Like, do they do that? Do they did that back in the World War II? Or is that just something they did because they wanted to know, tell the audience, oh, these planes are going to attack big cities. So you should be oh, definitely worried, you know? See, it's a combination of the two, it's but it's more to- for the audience. But the thing that's the worst part is that they're in English. Yeah, like... Because they should be in German. They should definitely be in German. And that's... Uh, that, is, that is something they that... They would be able to fly. It's not very aerodynamic, you know? They what, sh- the bombs? Yeah. Like, with the fucking propeller on it. It's fucking stupid as fuck. We get a gruesome death in a moment. Oh, uh, which one? Oh, hang on. Let's see. You know, because the names, the names on the plane, I think, because that was also another thing that my friend brought up, too, because his family is of German descent and stuff. So he was like, hey, wait a minute. They should be in German, those fucking pricks. <laughs> you know? See, that uh, wouldn't be able to fly, see. I'm sorry, nah. but the propeller's on the wrong fucking si- side of the fucking plane for stars. Oh! Here we go. There you go. There's that death where I was just like, oh, shit. Like, like I like the be bloodstream behind it. That's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I-, I just thought, like, Wow, that's that's pretty bloody. Like usually, like usually they don't show that much blood, but they did. I feel like that's all of that went to like, hey, listen, you know, if you keep a PG thirteen, you can have one scene where you you can go all out, and they're like, okay, <laughs> we'll make use of that, and they they just destroyed some guy on a plane, you know. See, I like okay. My question is those those things shooting from the top, right? Those are supposed to be kind of like bigger versions of the the guns, right? Those are R two T twos. Little R two. So my my question is, when you shoot a human with a gun, they teleport to a different dimension. But he shot the plane, and it just put a hole in it. So yeah, that's true. So is it does it only affect organic life forms, or did the movie just make a mistake and just decide that oh, you're not going to think about that, you know? 
Like that's something that I was wondering. Like it shot a hole in it rather than teleporting it to a different dimension. So Captain America shouldn't really be here right now unless it only affects organic life. Well, when- well that light beam's already hit his shield like three times. True, but his shield can deflect anything. Mm-hmm. That's that's essentially the rule. Like his shield. I think more than anything, like- it's probably just movie rule of hey, don't think about it. Yeah, <laughs> don't think about it. You know. But I mean, we do get in a moment, or well, in a minute or so. He grabs that tesseract and he clearly doesn't like die die like he quote unquote dies he, he 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 is uh his character is removed from the scripts of the film, so it's like you know I feel like i I do like your theory that he'll probably come back at some point um but yeah. I, I I'm just I don't know I'm just very curious how everything's gonna work out you know because I I just I'm just kind of like you know I'm just kind of interested in like puzzle pieces being put together and stuff because I've always liked puzzles like physical puzzles like you have to put the pieces together like that I do like I do like the way the scene is shot though it's a it, it's it's nice how like they have the whole like upside down whole zero gravity type thing going. You know, I think it looks pretty. It, it, it's probably the most, it's the best, uh, most authentic looking effect in the whole film, honestly. Um, even with all the CGI type stuff. Hugo even hated doing this part, apparently. Oh, really? You mean the whole speech? Oh, like, no, just the Red Skull part in general. Oh, well, I like, mean. He never wanted to come back to do it again. So if he does come back, we're going to get a new actor, guaranteed. Probably, but well, okay. So if we were to get a new actor, what what actor could play a Red Skull? Um, because now I'm trying to think. Uh oh, oh, uh, this is this is the part that's going to happen. Oh, guys, I'm going to the light. <laughs> like he's just like drawn to it, and then uh, he's going to disappear. And like the fight between them was a little bit weak. Like I'll admit, like it didn't last very long. Mm-hmm. Like what I liked about Winter Soldier was that you got a couple of um, face-offs between the Winter Soldier and Captain America, and each time they face each other, kind of whether it was like at the beginning where it was like more mentally, or the second fight or the third fight, each time like it got more and more intense and stuff, right? Yeah. See, look at that. That's totally like the the Bifrost kind of thing. Yeah, he's uh, he's definitely not dead. He's 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 just gone. He becomes Ghost Rider, man. <laughs> And I love how yeah, it, they have the rights to it. They could do it. I love how it melts through the thing. Like it's like the alien blood and shit, you know? So it just drops into the ocean. Oh no. See, there you go. It's actually got zeal. Oh, okay. Yeah. But then they put New York city next to it too. So it's like, yeah, you can, uh, I don't know. That's just <laughs> whatever. No, that's fine. Schmitz. Oh, don't say he's dead. Well, he doesn't know it at the time. Schmidt's not coming back until Infinity War Part One. Don't worry about it. <laughs> that's what my friend. That's what my friend did when Bucky died. Like he fell off the plane because he knew that he came back that he was going to be in Civil War. So because he saw him in the trailer, so he basically just said, "I'll oh, see you in the sequel." <laughs> but like he didn't necessarily know at the time that it was going to be the actual sequel. Uh, but yeah. I kind of like the scene where, like, I know, like, the Peggy and Captain America stuff hasn't necessarily been the best, but I think this scene is, would have been a lot better if, like, they had more of a connection. But I think that it has it had the potential to be pretty good and stuff. So let me get this straight, right? He crashes this plane, right, in, what, the 1960s, right? I, I, what, right now? No, this is the, the 40s. The yeah, 1940s, is... right? And they find it in, like, the 2000s, right? Yeah. So it took him something like 60, 60 years, right? Give or take. 70 right? years, yeah. To find this fucking plane that was like the size of the fucking moon. Not only that, yeah. but like you, <laughs> you would think that, I mean, I'm, I'm sure they did like some sort of search party for the plane, but you would think that he would have told them where he was going to be landing approximately. So, like, you like, hey, by the way, guys, I'm going to land on a giant batch of ice. Might want to come get me if I survive or at least come to collect the technology and try to use it for the Americans. You know, like, it seems unrealistic that they wouldn't have searched for or at least, you know, attempted to look. 
And if they didn't, if they if they had a scene showing that they were looking and then they didn't find it, that's one thing. But it's like well, they do, they do actually have that. Oh, she she must have been oh, really pissed when he didn't turn up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, after the scene, it shows that they're um they're looking for it. They find the the tesseract, and then he goes keep looking. Oh, okay, so and then it's that it just took him like seventy years to find him. All right, so well, I, I doubt that the same group that was searching would have found it. Eventually, I feel like, oh, well, shit. Captain I'd hate to step on your toes. Steve is dead, love. <laughs> I. Now, they did a nice little wrap up with the first Agent Carter season where it was all basically about Captain America's blood. And she kind of she tosses it away at the end and she's just like, all right, I got to like move on by now. And start having kids because I need to have Sharon eventually. But. Oh yeah, this is classic Captain America for him to fall under the ice and for them to do that. So, yeah, it's it's a very uh, it's very nice and stuff. And see, like it, it kind of it, it kind of sucks. Like, like I I imagine, and they brought this up in like the the Winter Soldier, but like I think about all the life I could miss. Like if I were chronologically like or frozen or whatever, and I miss like seventy years of my life. I would be like, holy shit, like my life, my life, I had to basically create a whole new identity in a whole new time period, you know? So I mm-hmm. guess it makes this character more relatable, especially in the second one, which is something that I feel like this first film lacked a little bit, I guess. But, you know. Why are these kind of celebrate in Britain when they're American? <laughs> but, well, because I think that that was supposed to symbolize like the end of the war. And I thought that Brit- Brit- mm-hmm. Britain and uh, America were allies. Yeah, see, here's your scene about the whole we found the Tesseract, and, uh... I just find the cube and just give up looking for a fucking cop. He's like, eh. Ah. Uh, just keep looking. He, he he kept looking and stuff. And it's funny how, like, I love how they, do, they, they make Howard Stark seem like he genuinely cares about finding Captain America and stuff. And it, it kind of, it kind of, uh, helps to contrast, uh, the idea that now Tony Stark and Captain America or C. Rogers are going to be at complete odds with each other, you know? So it's kind of like uh, two sides of the a coin, I guess. Oh, this photo. What a <laughs> stupid fucking photo. It's funny how, like, she looks at this photo and she acts the exact same that, like, um, it's like the exact, I'm sorry, it's like the exact same that like she looks at it as if it's like the bulky, like really muscular Chris Evans, but it's not. <laughs> like she's just looking at it like, oh, I miss him so much. But it's like he's that scrawny little shit that you just you met at the beginning, you know. So I don't know. Maybe she grew feelings and you know just started yeah. for who she, he was. Well, know? it's supposed to be that that message of like, uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's always what's inside that counts more. Right. Here we go with him waking up because we got to go back to the uh, the modern day. Which, uh, for those listening to this fan tracks, by the way, remember um, there the post credit scene is not actually like a post credit scene. It's just that they were doing a, a little trailer for Avengers, so it's not going to be the same kind of a thing. This this essentially was their post credit scene. So so. Yeah, like that's and 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 I I understand what they were trying to do here with the easing him into it, but it's like you have this man who could just like destroy an average person, you know? Like I doubt like that would really stop him. And it's funny how like he caught it, and I li- I like the fact that he was like, oh, I was at that game. That's why I know it wasn't in modern time, you know. This is uh, Amanda Rigetti, who I thought at first was supposed to be. Uh, Sharon, but nope, just like Shield Agent Number Eight or whatever. Is that is that what she what it says in the credits? Just Shield Agent Number Eight. Yeah, she's something like that. I, I don't know if she actually has like a specific number. She might just be Shield Agent. Uh, Let me double check that real quick. She is just Shield Agent. I still reckon David Hasselhoff should have played Nick Fury. <laughs> no way! Come on. Okay, like if you're, I, I. I like it's Sam it's, Jackson is perfect for this dude. Yeah, I agree. Uh, 
there's no way I want to come back to that old TV show. I, I'm because I'm trying to think because I I don't know who else could play uh, Nick Fury other than Sam Jackson because he's he's created the character and like the cinema in the cinematic universe so much that's like. I couldn't imagine anybody else being him. Like it's almost like a Robert Downey Jr. Tony Stark situation where it's like, I feel like he was perfectly cast, you know? I tell you what, if they run into a situation where they needed to recast him, go Denzel. No. You know what? I, I, I could see Denzel playing a good Nick Fury, although he'd have to go bald, of course, but like. They, they, they need to go back then and change the TAS of Spider-Man and change him to black. Because that's my <laughs> Nick Fury, dude. A uh, black Spider Man's or Nick Fury? No, white Nick oh. Fury is my Nick Fury. Oh, okay. I'm gonna but, uh, give me Sam Jackson Nick Fury all the way, man. Ultimate Nick Fury, so much cooler. You know what I did love about this one scene in the town square? It's the perfect way to get all of your um, product placement in <laughs> without having to spread it out throughout the film. Because, like, if I would have seen like a like a a uh, Snickers bar or something. Yeah, it would have been like, oh shit, Corona. you know. But it's like everything there. It's like it could just be a product placement. So it's it's just nice to play. Swatch. A <laughs> swatch. I like this line. I'm at a date. This is a good little like. I oh, see the cut. The post scene right should be her just sat waiting for him in the restaurant <laughs> <laughs> for seventy years. Yeah. <laughs> That would have been She's just kind of like, damn it, I really want to dance. <laughs> like, Peggy, you have other shit to do, but Steve might show up. Nah, she had her fondue. <laughs> I'd fondue her. I would second that fondue. So yeah, that is uh, Captain America, the first Avenger. And um, I mentioned earlier, it's something that it still holds up, but it still has some of the same issues. It's not one of those type of movies where you watch it a second or a third time and there's suddenly there's like all these extra layers that you didn't get exposed to before. It's not like one of those onion kind of movies, but for what they needed to do, they needed to bring Captain America into the fold. They needed to bring him into the MCU in a way that people could digest it a little better. Cause it's, it's cheesy and it's the type of thing where you go with Iron Man. He's cool. You know, he's got that fucking rock music and Hulk is like, beats the shit out of things and Thor is this god and then it's like but then you go with Captain America and I think they did a good job overall and it's just man they took it to the whole new level with Winter Soldier I so I would I would rank it one of my lower ones but you know it's they kind of um they accomplished everything they needed to and but that's a terrible I hate the pin up things how does this rank for you, Sean? Is this like um, towards the top, towards the middle, towards the bottom? Towards the middle. The bottom for me, uh, the Thor films. And Thor The Dark World might be my absolute least favorite. And Dead Devil is up there. Eric Banner's Hulk is up there. Oh, I'm not talking about the, but the non-MCU ones. I would say... I would say... Uh, if we're doing MCU, I'd say below. Low. What about you, Andre? Is this like middle range, top range, bottom? Uh, and see, here's the thing, because after rewatching both of them, I rewatched, you know, The Winter Soldier, and it's like, it sucks to have to compare the two, but like, this one is, I don't want to say this one is like dated because it was only like, you know, five years ago, but it's like, I do feel like it is one of the lower ones. I wouldn't say it's the worst. I would agree with, uh, uh, Sean, that the Thor movies are definitely not interesting. I like the first Thor, but the second Thor was just uh, okay. I like, I'm not really excited for the Thor Agnarok or whatever that is. Like, you know, I went the longest without even seeing Thor 2, so once I finally did see it, I didn't feel like I was missing anything. But I would say that this is better than, like, a, say, Iron Man 2 and the Thor The Dark World, but it's not as good as every other else. So it's probably like the bronze medal for the worst but i still like it so the last thing for us to do pretty much because the credits are on right now and i'm pretty sure anybody listening is uh you know kind of we already gave you everything that we were sort of thinking about the movie but uh we just need to promote some stuff going on tell you guys to check out some other things 
And before we do that, let me uh, just mention to you guys that are listening still and haven't shut this off yet. Make sure you leave your comments below and tell us what you think of the movie. If you uh, are on that higher end or if this is something that maybe hasn't held up over the years or whatever, leave your comments below. Tell us what you think about that. Hit that thumbs up button and that subscribe button as well. But uh, Sean, anything you want to promote? Uh, just YouTube search Premier Pals and uh, add me on the Twitter, which will probably be in the description, right? Uh, maybe. I don't know. Uh, okay. <laughs> if, if not, it's Twitter. Uh, dot com forward slash sean c two k three seven or just myspace dot com forward slash happy pope <laughs> myspace you're still using myspace <laughs> andre anything you want to put out there for uh promo stuff um well if you like uh gameplay commentaries uh movie reviews podcasts that i do with my friends i have a youtube channel andre the turtle and i also have a twitter for that youtube channel at andre the turtle so if you're interested in any of that check it out all right, guys, keep checking fanboysanonymous.com. We got more stuff coming your way for Captain America Civil War. We're obviously going to be seeing that movie. We're going to be doing some different reviews, and maybe if it ends up being fantastic, maybe some special stuff on top of that. Maybe if it ends up being terrible, maybe some <laughs> other extra stuff too. And, uh, you know, we got other Marvel movies coming out later on this summer and all the other kind of normal stuff. So fanboysanonymous.com, bookmark that. And uh, whatever ends up happening, you'll be able to see it there. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Facebook is dot com slash fanboys anonymous. Twitter is dot com slash fanboys anon. And if you are on iTunes and Stitcher, leave a positive review there as well, because that helps out quite a bit. But that'll be it for episode 16 of the Fan Tracks podcast. Thank you all for listening, everybody. It's time for us to geek out. Adios. Adios.